Pleasant greetings, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, just a short message. This one's a quite short one. Um, while I was doing my morning prayer, um, the Lord spoke something into my spirit and he told me to make a video and share it. Um, I think yesterday, yes, yesterday, I read, excuse me, I read a scripture. Excuse me. I read a scripture and... Um, it kind of shook me up a little bit, but I was just contemplating in my spirit what the Lord was saying and trying to figure out how to apply that for my life personally. But this morning, while I was doing my morning prayer, the Lord reminded me of this scripture and he told me to make a video and speak to the brothers and sisters. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to talk about it. Um, let me begin by just reading this scripture, actually. So it's coming from Second Peter. I'm going to read to about verse 8 or 9 probably. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there, were, as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destructions. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, sorry, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And though covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So up until there in verse 3, the Lord saying, there's false prophets, amen, they've condemned themselves, they're teaching you false doctrine, heresies, Amen. And, and, and their destruction, their damnation, their slumber, if not, God's going to bring down his wrath upon them. But here's the real part of this, of this uh, message right now. Verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensemble unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver with the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Amen. Glory to God. Um. So brothers and sisters, the Lord is clearly saying here right now, if, if, if down to the angels that was living in heaven, that chose to, 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 to follow Lucifer, when he, when he rose up against God, they, they joined with him, and they was also thrown out with, 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 with the devil by Archangel Michael. If even the angels that was in heaven with God is in hell right now in chains because they sinned against God, if in the days of Noah, if God only found to see fit to save only eight people in the whole of the world, and flood destroyed everybody else. I'm sure there was women, children, all kind of people. But because the Lord said their sin was disgusting, he wiped them all out and saved. He protected only the just. And if you go on in Sodom and Gomorrah, same thing again. The sin was disgusting. The Lord said the sin was like a stench coming up to heaven. It stank. See me? Now, and even then, for, for Solomon Gomorrah, you know, there was a lot of sexual immoralities, uh, bestiality, having sex with animals, a lot of what's going on now, but now it's just worse than then. Yeah, it's worse now than then, but it was the same thing. And God said, yeah, all right then, what time am I going to... He made fire fall like rain and destroyed all of it. And the only person he saw fit to survive was Lot and his wife. 
And even so, the Lord told Lot's wife, listen, don't look back. I'm bringing you to a better place. Don't look back into the sin. Just like how some of us get saved and it says, don't look back into where you're coming from. Don't look back into the drugs or the alcohol or the, or the, or the promiscuous sex or the sexual immorality. Don't look back. Stay forward. And just that one commandment, she decided to look back because she wanted to see what the fire was doing to the village or to the community or whatever where it was lit. She looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. Just for that one little disobedience. So it ended up being that only Lot was saved out of a whole city. Matter of fact, God said unto him, if you can find me one righteous man up in there. Oh, how many he said, I'm not sure, but it was a small number. Like he said, find me ten righteous people and I'll save the city. Or five, there was a number. And Lot couldn't find them. So the Lord said, I'm going to destroy the city. You and your wife leave because I'm going to destroy it. Amen. And in the very same way, the Lord's telling us right now that we need to leave this Babylonian system. We need to leave our sins. We need to not look back because it's going to destroy it. I'm not going to with the message. Anyway, let me just go quickly to Genesis chapter 19. You know, so I'm not going to talk about all of it without giving any scriptures. So let me just give you this one quick. Chapter 19, Genesis verse 24. The, then, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. He let the fire fall like rain and burn up the wall of this. Yeah? Verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Because earlier the Lord told her, don't even look back or you will be made a pillar of salt. And she didn't listen. So like I'm saying, brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying, if the angels that was in heaven through their disobedience is chained up in hell right now, awaiting their judgment on judgment day. If, if, if Noah and only eight people in his family were saved and the Lord flood destroyed the whole world. If Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord rained fire and only saved two people which became one because one was still disobedient. Why do you think it's okay to be walking up and down in sin right now? I'll tell you, oh, I go to church sometime, I pray sometime. Uh, God only look at your heart. I don't matter what. The same necromancies from, from, from... From Noah's days, the voodoo, the magic, Merlin Cart movies, these, these Marvel Adve Avengers, movies countless of them. Yeah? All they do is promote witchcraft, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. There's so many of them, I don't even want to be naming them. But you know where I'm going. There's a lot of witchcraft and voodoo in these movies. Same in these music videos. You can literally see them doing sacrificial rituals, dressing to imitate deities and, 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 and all kind of fallen angels, gods. All of this Sodom and Gomorrah behavior is happening right now. This witchcraft is happening right now. And, and, and the brothers and the sisters seem to think that, oh, God, God, God just looks at your heart, it will protect you. He didn't look at their heart. He didn't protect them. Angels that was in heaven are chained up in hell right now for disobedience to God. God flooded the whole world and only saved eight people because of disobedience to God. He chose to only save Lot and his wife and he still turned the wife into a brimstone of a pillar of salt because she wanted to be disobedient too. Amen? So the Lord said to ask you, Amen? How worthy are you to escape the destruction that's coming right now? Huh? Are you being disobedient? This is what the Lord told me to ask you. Amen? He said to tell you to wake up church. Wake up brothers and sisters. Wake up sons and daughters of Zion. How many were saved then? Very little. And this thing that was happening then that caused destruction to come, it's the same thing happening now. So guess how many are going to be saved this time? Very little. When the floods come to destroy whatever is going to be because this in there is coming. And if you watch my videos, I can see the dreams and the vision. Floods coming. How many are going to be saved? People backing out their phone to record it. Look at, you ain't going to be, you better go to Jesus. Amen. Same sort of among Gomorrah in, for example, I'm Jamaican. Listen, this dance hall, this thing needs to stop. Yeah. I don't want to hear nothing about dance hall is the voice of the people. They're naked, they're winding up, dry humping, doing all kind of sexual acts, doing all kind of um, oral stuff with Guinness bottles and all kind of nastiness. Yeah? And the Lord is saying, listen, this needs to stop. This is why I let brimstone and fire fall down. This is why I, 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 I chained up the demons in hell. This is why I let there was a flood for the same stuff you're not doing right now. So repent. How many do you think are going to be saved? How worthy do you think you are to escape this destruction? Amen? So the Lord is saying, my brothers and sisters, repent. Amen? Now, if you go to verse 9, it says, 
the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. He knows how to deliver the godly. This is why when Noah's days, him and his family who preached righteousness was protected and everybody else who laughed at him while he was building the ark and, and, and continuing their sin and doing whatever they want, washed away by the flood. He knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. This is why in Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot, well, Lot was the only one that got saved. And in this time, he knows the people who are seeking after him, after holiness, and not trying to be disobedient and living in sin, talking about, oh, God don't mind, I could ask for forgiveness five minutes before I die, and I'll go to, listen, God's not playing. He's saying, just like how there's angels chained up in hell, just like how Noah and his family was the only one that got saved, just like how Lot was the only one that escaped the brimstone and fire, how worthy are you to escape the destruction that's coming upon the earth right now in these last days? Amen? And so he knows how to deliver his people out of temptation for the very same way he delivered Lot, he delivered Noah. So, and he continues to say, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Just like how the unjust was punished and chained up in hell, just like how the unjust was punished with the flood, just like how the unjust was punished when fire fall like rain upon them, the unjust will also be punished in these last days. Don't let God look at you as unjust. Let him look at you as a righteous man. Let him look at you as a righteous woman. Let him look at you as a woman of God, as a man of God, preaching righteousness, trying to stay holy, live obedient to the word of God. The Lord wants repentance. He wants humbling. He wants fasting. He wants prayer. He wants worship. He wants you to be in the word. Amen. If you look, you, you know there's locusts eating up some part of Africa, the, the coronavirus, earthquakes happening all over the place. You look left, right and center, brothers and sisters. Destruction is at the door. And he said that I will come and rapture my people to deliver them from the trials that will come upon this earth. Hallelujah. Shikarabata. So oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me go to Revelation quickly. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He says, Behold, Revelation chapter 3, verse 11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast what thou hast, that no man might take your crown. Amen. Verse 10, he says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon it. That's the seven days of, of tribulation. There's many more scriptures. And just like how he protected um, um, Noah and his family from the flood, he protected Lot from the fire, he wants to protect us from the tribulation that's coming because it's going to be hell on earth. But if you're not counted worthy in his eyes, you're not going to escape this destruction. Just like those men did not escape that destruction. Amen? So the Lord said to ask you, how many of you really think that you're worthy to escape the destruction that's coming, living in sin, watching abominations? Because even in the days of of um of Noah, it was only the sacrificing and the, the, the occultism and the witchcraft. He said that men kept thinking evil thoughts. Just your thoughts alone. Are you thinking to kill people? Are you thinking to do voodoo? Are you thinking evil against your brother? Are you thinking negative all the time? Are you always complaining and grumbling in your heart? God looking at everything and he will judge you and me, all of us. So we need to come to a place where God could look at us and see us and please with the thoughts in your head. And please with where you put your hands on your feet. And please with where your eyes look at. And please with what you listen to. And please with the conversations that you have. How many conversations don't glorify God and we sit there talking about it like to say God don't see. He's calling repentance. He's calling prayer. He's calling fasting. He's calling us to be in his word because he said it very clearly. I'm going to read it again. Hallelujah. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to skip the beginning and I'm going to go straight to verses, verses 4. For God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah and the eight person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in flood upon the whole world of the ungodly. And turning the city of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensemble unto those that 
after should live ungodly and deliver just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked see that just the conversation alone vex him for the righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds that's basically saying what the lord said in the bible bad manners corrupt good manners so if you're a godly person, you're around ungodly people, keep on listening to ungodly stuff, witnessing ungodly stuff, only a matter of time before you also become ungodly. So you got upset with that too. Because he's saying you lot sins are spilling over into the righteous, making them also unrighteous, just like you. I've had enough. And right now he's saying, church, he's had enough. Brothers and sisters, he's had enough. Destruction is coming. The Antichrist is coming on the scene and he ain't coming to play. So the Lord will remove his people but we have to become worthy to escape this destruction how worthy are you the Lord asks and if you're not sure that you're worthy if you don't feel worthy go pray fast repent read your Bible worship God because the Lord said to ask you forget about what you think I'm telling you not that many will be saved just like in in Noah's days not that many were saved and just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah not that many were saved and even now, not that many is going to be saved. So please be one that was saved. The Bible tells you that wide is the gate to destruction and narrow is the road to salvation. How many of you are on that na wide road thinking that it's the narrow road? The Lord said to do this illustration, the road is so narrow, it's like walking a tight rope. You stumble to the left, you fall off. Into the, you fall off. Focus only on Jesus. Focus only on the word of God. Amen. God bless you brothers and sisters. Repent.